Good morning, people. So, I recently went on my bookshelf. And I don't really read books very much anymore because I've been reading the Bible. And I'm like, you know what? The Bible got everything I need in it, which is true. It does. But I felt like God thought I would benefit from reading this book. And so I didn't even know I was looking for a book to read. I just walked over to the bookshelf and I grabbed a book off of it. And the book I grabbed was called The Love Dare. I don't know if any of you have ever heard it, heard of it. Um, I've had this book forever and I've never actually read it in this time. And I felt like I was supposed to read it with you guys. So without further ado, um, I'm going to read the introduction. Receive this as a warning. This 40-day journey cannot be taken lightly. It is a challenge and often a very difficult process, but an incredibly fulfilling one. To take this dare requires a resolute mind and a steadfast determination. It is not meant to be sampled or briefly tested, and those who quit early will forfeit the great benefits. If you will commit to a day at a time for 40 days, the results could change your life and your marriage. Consider it a dare from others who have done it before you. I'm not married. And honestly, I don't really think I want to be married at this point. Um, if God changes my mind, good for the Lord. But otherwise, like, he and I got some big things. And if I was married, I would have to worry about staying home and taking care of my husband and my family the way that they deserve. And Lord's got... He's taken me places and I don't want to have to be thinking about the people I left behind and if they're okay, because God's going to take care of them. If I'm not married to them, they're not mine to take care of the Lord's to take care of. So I don't got to worry about it. So, but that being said, this is a love dare. It will touch on marriages well, not touch on marriages. It is for marriages, but it's also for everyone. And God has actually been fulfilling the dares with children in my life. And I'll explain it after the first chapter. Um, so we will start with chapter one. Um, if I speak with the tongue of men and of angels, but I do not have love, I have become a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and know all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith so as to remove mountains, but I do not have love, I am in nothing. And if I give all my possessions to feed the poor, and if I surrender my body to be burned, but do not have love, it profits me nothing. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1 through 3. Day one, love is patient. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Ephesians 4, verse 2. Love works. It is life's most powerful motivator and has far greater depth and meaning than most people realize. It always does what is best for others and can empower us to face the greatest of problems. We are born with a lifelong thirst for love. Our hearts desperately need it, like our lungs need oxygen. Love changes our motivation for living. Relationships become meaningful with it. No marriage is successful without it. Love is built on two pillars that best define what it is. Those pillars are patience and kindness. All other characteristics of love are extension of these two attributes. And that's where your dare will begin with patience. That's a hard one. Love will inspire you to become a patient person. When you choose to be patient, you respond in a positive way to a negative situation. You are slow to anger. You choose to have a long fuse instead of a quick temper. Rather than being restless and demanding, love helps you settle down and begin extending mercy to those around you. Patience brings an internal calm during an external storm. No one likes to be around impatient person. It causes you to overreact in angry, foolish, and regrettable ways. 
The irony of anger towards a wrongful action is that it spawns new wrongs of its own. Anger almost never makes things better. In fact, it generally adds, it usually generates additional problems. Be patient. Stop problems in their track. More than biting your lip. More than clapping a hand over your mouth. Patience is a deep breath. It clears the air. It stops foolishness from whipping its scorpion tail all over the room. It is a choice to control your emotions rather than allowing your emotions to control you and shows discretion instead of returning evil for evil. If your spouse offends you, do you quickly retaliate or do you stay under control? Do you find that anger is your emotional default when treated unfairly? If so, you are spreading poison rather than medicine. Anger is usually caused when the strong desire for something is mixed with disappointment or grief. You don't get what you want and you start heating up inside. It is often an emotional reaction that flows out of our own selfishness, foolishness, or evil motives. Patience, however, makes us wise. It doesn't rush to judgment but listens to what the other person is saying. Patience stands in the doorway where anger is clawing to burst in but waits to see the whole picture before passing judgment. The Bible says, he who is slow to anger has great understanding, but he who is quick tempered exalts folly. Proverbs 14, 29. As sure as a lack of patience will turn your home into a war zone, the practice of patience will foster peace and quiet. A hot-tempered man stirs up strife, but the slow to anger calms a dispute. Proverbs 15, verse 18. Statements like these from the Bible, book of Proverbs, are clear principles with timeless relevance. Patience is where love meets wisdom, and every marriage needs this combination to stay healthy. Patience helps you give your spouse permission to be human. It understands that everyone fails. When a mistake is made, it chooses to give them more time than they deserve to correct it. It gives you the ability to hold on during tough times in your relationship rather than bailing out under the pressure. But can your spouse count on having a patient wife or husband to deal with? Can she know that locking her keys in the car will be met by your understanding rather than a demeaning lecture that makes her feel like a child? Can he know that cheering during the last second of a football game won't invite a loud mouth laundry list of ways he should be spending his time? It turns out that few people are as hard to live with as an impatient person. What would the tone and volume of your home be like if you tried this biblical approach? See that no one repays another with evil for evil, but always seeks after that which is good for one another. 1 Thessalonians 5.15 Few of us do patience very well, and none of us do it naturally, but wise men and women will pursue it as an essential ingredient to their marriage relationship. That's a good starting point to determine true love. This love, dear journey is a process and the first thing you must resolve to possess is patience. Think of it as a marathon, not a sprint, but it is a race worth running. It says in here that we need to strive for patience. Yes, but we can't do it by ourselves. We need to ask the Lord to give us patience and then he will give us opportunities to practice patience. Ask for it and then be aware of where God is showing you that you can practice. So today's dare. The first part of this dare is fairly simple. Although love is communicated in a number of ways, our words often reflect the condition of our heart. For the next day, resolve to determine patience and to say nothing negative to your spouse at all. If the temptation arises, choose not to say anything. It's better to hold your tongue than to say something you'll regret. And my story for that day was, um, I live with my best friend and he has three kids and I have my own son. And we were all doing Valentine's Day cards for the kids' school together. 
on the living room floor. And I like to think I'm a decently patient person. And I feel like I've been becoming more patient as I've been praying for it harder and trying to act it out more. Like, instead of grumbling and complaining when I have to be patient, I thank God. I rejoice in it. Thank you, Jesus, for this chance to try being patient. Oops, I might not have done it perfect, but thank you, because I know you'll let me try again. Rejoice in everything. But, so, we're sitting there, and I don't even remember what my son did. But, he was being disobedient. I told him to do something, and he didn't want to do it, and so he didn't. Which is so often the case with us. And with children. We are the Lord's children. And we do the same thing to him. And I was like. I'm all about teaching. Like I'm huge on teaching lessons. I'm like. Oh I see where it's applied. I see the lesson. Let's teach it. Let's teach it. Let's teach it. And I'm like. Oh he's going to learn. We're going to teach a lesson. It's lesson time. And my son is very sensitive. He's very empathic. And he's extremely hard on himself. And. If he does something wrong, he will blow up on himself and it will ruin his evening. And is that correct? No, because we should not be that hard on ourselves because God isn't that hard on ourselves. But it is what he is right now. And I was going to very calmly tell him, Isaac, you just did this, this and this. And that is wrong because of this, this, and this. And so now because you did that and you knew you weren't supposed to, these are the consequences that are going to happen. And I was like building up this big speech in my mind. And I'm like, oh, we're going we gonna to teach a good lesson. And Kelvin, adult communicated with me, which is a gift from the Lord as well. And without saying anything, you know, the whole, like, you make faces at each other and you do your eyes and you're, like, you're sending all the messages with your brain and you're using your telepathy and you're, like, they better pick up on this. And he's talked to me and he said, it's not worth it. It will ruin the whole night. Isaac will not have fun. It'll ruin the other kids' night because then they'll be stressed out because Isaac is stressed out and then Isaac's going to be down in his room. And he he was just, he said, let it go. And... In the moment, I was like, fine, I'll let it go. But I pulled out my phone. I'm like, but I'm going to write this down. And I'm going to talk to him about it later. And so I did. I wrote it down, but I let it go. And we had a great rest of the evening. And the Lord revealed to me later that that was my way of showing patience is by letting it go. Patience is mixed with a lot of other things. Love, forgiveness, letting someone off the hook. And so that's how I found that dare come true in my life. So be open to the different ways that love can work. If you're not married, if you're not in a relationship, if you don't have kids, there's people everywhere and they aren't going anywhere. And most of them are kind of annoying. There's lots of practice for patients out there. You don't got to have your own person. You don't got to have your own kid to practice love because there's people out there. You know what else? There's animals. Oh, yeah. We got to be patient with animals, too. Talks in the Bible a lot about the way people behave and treat animals. It tells a lot about a person. Mm -hmm. So that's your dare for the day. Leave comments. Let me know what happens. For some reason, Facebook doesn't always tell me when people comment on my stuff. So I will try to come back and look through here as I can. 
Uh, but there's only one of me. So talk amongst each other. Help each other. Build each other up. Share your experiences with this love dear. I can't wait to hear the stories. Because if you accept this challenge and you go on the journey with me, the Lord will change you even more than he's changed me. I thought he did something great in me. He can do something better in you. The Lord's got better things planned for us than we could ever imagine. Think of the Lord loves our planning because then he can like top it off. So what game I like to play with God is I imagine all the best things I could ever possibly do and all the people I can help. And I just imagine all the good things that could happen. And I'm like, God, what you got that's better than that? What you got, Lord? Because this is my imagination and you think you can do better. Show me. Show me better. Take me better places. And if you keep playing that game and you keep getting better and thinking better, the Lord's going to keep matching you and he's going to keep taking you better. He's working like crazy in my life. And it's going to be good. It's going to be so good. It already is good. He wants to work with you guys too. I would love you guys to take this dare and go on this journey and see what happens in your lives. Love you guys. Have a good day.